time to watch me now. Some said it couldn't be done, but drawing inspiration from today's movie, I am ready to do what the world has been putting off for some time. Injecting the essence of a wolf into a man. <laughs> Bring me the peasants. <laughs> Now, bring me the wolf. Okay, but he's pretty vicious. Watch out for those things. I don't think I can control him. Uh, well, Should we start a We Hate Bobo Club? Let's. I'm president. Jinx. Hi, this is Colin Reboy. I'm here with Mary Jo Peel, co-star and writer of the award-winning show Mystery Science Theater 3000. On Mystery Science Theater 3000, the crew of the Satellite of Love watches some really bad movies and makes funny comments about them. It's been a few years since the last show, but bad movies are still being made. Have there been any recently that make you wish you were still doing the show? Yes, I think um, I'd like to do Troy. I don't know if you saw that, but Troy would be good for MST. And... I have a terrible memory for movies. Oh, I know, Dodgeball was pretty bad. But I love Ben Stiller, so it's okay by me. Everyone remembers you as Dr. Pearl Forrester, one of the mad scientists who shows the movies. But, like the rest of the cast, you had many jobs on the show, didn't you? Yes, I was a writer. And then I got the job of Pearl Forrester, who was Dr. Forrester's mother, and that was after Trace Ballou left the show. And when I was a writer, I was also doing um, extra parts, uh, bit parts like Jan in the Pan. Um, Bridget and I often played small roles, like the next door neighbors in Deep 13. So I did a lot of um, odds and ends bits like that. Everyone on the show did a lot of extra things because it was a small cast and crew. Many people think that all your jokes were ad-libbed. Was that really the case? No, but thank you for thinking that. Um, the jokes were very carefully scripted and we just had very good actors who made it sound very spontaneous. In the later episodes, when Pearl was the lead villain, she seemed younger, prettier, and nastier. Was that on purpose? <laughs> I don't know, but but thank you. Um, I don't think that was intentional. I think we just sort of got tired of. I know I got tired of putting on so much makeup for every for every shoot, and uh, I know that I lost my long, colorful nails. Um, but I'm glad that she got meaner. That's a good thing. About the same time that the cast was making Mystery Science Fear 3000 the movie, there was a subplot on the TV show where Crochy Robot was trying to sell the screenplay for Earth vs. Soup to Pearl and her son, Dr. Clayton Forrester. Coincidence? Uh, no. <laughs> you know, actually, it's, um, we had a lot of trouble getting the movie made. It was very frustrating for us. And so what always seemed to happen during our writing process is that we, we got to exercise our demons, if you will. We got to take out our, our frustrations and actually writing a funny script about our frustrations. So, no, that's absolutely no coincidence. We, we wanted to show... The, the frustrations we were having. Sometimes you'd recreate characters from movies and host segments, and some would become so popular that they kind of had a life of their own. Like Mike Nelson's Torco or Bridget Jones' Miss, Mr. B. Natural. In your case, the best example would be Jan Nepan, the body the bodyless star of the brain that wouldn't die. When when you were shooting that, did you have a feeling that she'd catch on, or was it a surprise? It was a surprise. I really had no idea that she would, she would be a big hit like that. And uh, I remember when I was doing that, 
I had this device rigged around my neck so it looked like my head was sitting in a pan and therefore I could not take a break, I could not sit down while we were shooting it and my colleagues were always so funny that I had this really hard time trying not to laugh and not only that, I had a lot of Diet Coke and I had to go to the ladies room really bad and I couldn't. I was up in that rig for about two hours. I'm told that you will never fi find a Mystery Science Fair 3000 cast member in the same room with Joe Don Baker. Why is that? <laughs> Joe Don Baker, we understand, was not very pleased with our making fun of him on, on the movie Mitchell. And I haven't heard directly his feelings, but I, we've heard rumors that uh, he was very displeased and um, uh, I, he may have threatened to beat all of us up. I'm not sure. And I don't know for sure. I know that over the years, a few people have criticized Mystery Science Theater 3000 for being disrespectful to the art of movies. But since you would often show features like the Dead Talk Back or ha Manos, The Hand of Fate, that might otherwise be forgotten. Were, weren't you actually in the business of preserving old movies that might otherwise just di disappear? Wow, I think that's a really good point. I think it's important to know that underneath it all, all of us loved movies. We loved those movies. We really loved the effort that people put into it. And and I think you make a very good point. There is a sense of preservation to what we were doing. At least, I'd like to think so. Um, yeah, I, I think underneath it all, it was, it was really done lovingly. We were all film buffs. We were all respectful of what people were trying to do. But on the other hand, we couldn't just pretend that those were good movies. So what have you done since the show went off the air? Well, um, I traveled for about a year in Europe and um, Northern Africa. And then I moved to New York for three years, and that was, that was a job unto itself. And I lived there for three years and did some writing here and there and worked at a magazine. And last year I moved back to Minnesota where um, I worked on a book which comes out this month and um, still still writing a lot and keeping busy and catching up with my family and friends. Thanks, Mary Jo. That was it was a pleasure talking to you. This is Colin Reboy, Fletcher Elementary School.